Okay, so let's look at how I plan out my week. So I have a plum paper planner that I use. It allows me to personalize things. So up here I have extras. This would be if a kid has an activity that I maybe am just doing drop off and pick up a job or something of that sort that I'm not having to be there the whole time. It's not blocking off my schedule. So that's what the extras are. Then I have a six to nine, a 10 to one, a two to five, and then an evening block. So, and then at the bottom I have our meals. First thing I did was go through and put in all of our things that we know we have going on. So on Tuesdays, we have a co-op. So I block that off with a co-op sticker. We also will most likely have piano lessons in the afternoon. So I will put those in. Piano lessons. Okay. And then we have an activity on Wednesday. We have church Wednesday night. Saturday, I have a baby shower I'm going to. We have some people coming over and blocked off Sunday for our church activities. And as far as I know, oh, there actually is something else. On Friday, we are doing a zoo trip with friends. So we will. I almost forgot. Usually I look at my calendar, but as I'm doing it. Okay, so zoo trip on Friday. Uh, Friday. So first I put all of that stuff in. I also like to block off these areas for the extras and the meals with some type of washi tape. I have some different ones. We will choose uh, some leaves. It's fall, right? I love all the different stickers and washi tape for planners, but I also don't like to spend a whole lot of money on all of them. So. And I'm not a perfectionist as I do this, you will find out. I do this for practical purposes. So, and I'd already written in some of our meals because I was trying to make a grocery list the other day, so. I'm going a little above the meals to make sure that I don't. Okay. So that is all in there. Then I wrote in what we're going to be having. So we're having chicken pot pie on Monday, potato soup on Tuesday, Wednesday, we almost always do leftovers. Thursday is biscuits and gravy. Friday, I don't remember. We'll have to see what I put on my meal plan. Friday, I have spaghetti. So I will write, oh, that is going to bother me if I use that color. Okay. Spaghetti. I left out the A. Spaghetti, and then we're doing two soups. I'm doing chicken tortilla. And I am doing um, cheeseburger. And then on Sunday, we usually do something in the crock pot. We are going to have corned beef because I have two that I found buried in my freezer. Okay, and then after I do that, I know kind of what my week looks like, and then I put in if there's anything I specifically know I'm going to have to get done. Um, we have co-op on Tuesday. If I haven't prepped and gotten stuff ready, I know I'll need to put that onto my Monday somewhere. I also will start putting in school. I always use green for school and who I'm teaching and what I'm teaching for school lessons. And I will put those in, if I, especially if I know that there's a certain kid I have to catch up with. My older kids, I don't necessarily check in with every single day. If there's one I know I have to get to, I will put them on there. We This past week, we had some sick kids, so it kind of threw off what we need. But I know that I will want to read to my littles. And then I know that I need to do that child, and I need to do that child, and they are younger. They always need to get hit on. And the toddler definitely needs to get touched on. And then probably the three older ones. We'll put them all on there. And then we will see as we go throughout the week whether they really, or when I get to Monday, I'll see if they all the bigger ones actually need me on Monday. I will leave Wednesday open to see, well, to see who I need to get to, but we know that I need to get to the two youngest. 
well, three, the toddler will not go without having her school done, her preschool done. So I will put those three on there. And then I will, if any bigger kids didn't get done on Monday, I will do them on Wednesday, but they don't necessarily have to be done on Monday and Wednesday. Since we're at co-op on Tuesday, that will be a lot of theirs. And then Thursday, I again will make sure I read to the littles. I do it other times, other days, not necessarily when it's written. I will add things throughout the week. This just gets me a starting place. And those three youngest, I will write on there to make sure that they get hit. And then after Wednesday, when I see who I do on Wednesday, then I'll figure out who I need to add in for Thursday to check in on. Friday, that will be all day and will be gone. Okay, so that will cover what we're going to my part of the planning. Over here I have a to-do list where I will write in things as I come up with them throughout the week. I will write them in over here. Oh, I need I have some other things I need to add in here too before I forget. Um, and then, but this gets us started with the school, but I will add in more stuff as I go throughout the week. Now, the other things that I always add in, I used those already. I always pay bills, balance the checkbook on Friday. I put in our co-op sticker already. I always clean house on Friday, although that will probably actually need to be done on Thursday. Let me see if I can get that off. And that does not want to come off. There we go. That's actually going to have to get done Thursday afternoon. And the other one that I see, oh, there it is. Grocery shopping, I tend to do Thursdays during nap time because it's easy to run to the grocery store then. Okay, so that gets us started on my part of the weekend. Like I said, other things will get added in as we go throughout the week. Now I move to our school planner. And this is where I write down what my kids are going to be doing each day of the school week. So I start by writing their names in across this portion. I'm just using initials because not necessarily everybody needs to know only their names. And I know who they are, obviously. And the last one. Okay, over here, I write in their co-op assignments. So on Tuesday, they have co-op, and I will write that in. And then some of them will have piano lessons, and I will write that in. Those that take piano lessons. Okay, and so that is after we get our assignments from co-op, I will write them in over here for those that need me to. The older kids tend to know what they're going to do. The younger kids may get an assignment. Also, Friday is zoo, so I will go ahead and fill that in because they're not going to be doing homework on Friday. Now, that means if they're not doing homework, schoolwork on Friday, that on Thursday and Wednesday, they need to really make sure they get co-op work done. Um, this one can probably get most of his done on Thursday and Monday. She may have some, but we will go ahead and write in that they need to work on their co-op assignments. He does not have co-op assignments. Okay. And then I think if there's anything special throughout the week, are we gonna do an art project together? Are we going to have a game afternoon that we're going to do? So I'm gonna to try to get them together to play some games or I'm gonna play games with them. Do we have any projects we're gonna work on? The project that I want them to start working on is a 4-H project and they each have a different poster this doesn't do 4-H, but the other kids each have a 4-H poster that they're going to be working on. So I'm going to assign them to be thinking about um, that. And so I'm going to write it here. And then I'm going to write just a time limit. I just want them to spend a little time thinking about it and working on it each day. So I write the time so that they know that, okay, I'm going to be working on this, but there is a time limit. I don't have to do the whole project today. Okay, and she's going to work on her name. 
poster. And I do abbreviate a lot and they start to learn or they ask or they guess. We never know. Okay. Oh, and she is going to do, oh, I know what. She is going to do an insect poster. This is her first year to be official 4-H'er. And so she is going to do that for an entomology project. Okay, so started with projects. So sometimes we might want to do an art video or sometimes we might, what else might we do? Like I said, games or art video, doing a project like that. Sometimes we might take a whole afternoon or a whole day and just focus on a 4-H project or some type of project. But this week, nope, we're just adding in little bits of doing that project. And I would probably have him do a project. I just don't know what project he might do yet. But I'll probably take some time either Monday or Thursday. Let's assign it to Thursday. We'll do, I'll just write 4-H poster. And I will spend some time just with him because he is six. He will need a little bit of time with me. Okay, then I start filling in all the basics that we need to get done. She may have some co-op to finish before we go on Tuesday. So I'll put that in there and put a question mark. And then we have math and we have grammar. Um, Bible memory, they are doing a competition. So she will need to, she's learning and practicing those. Um, and then let's see, we have not done art for a while. So she needs to do some art and I'll have her do that for about an hour. Because once you're going to get it out, you might as well. And then let's see, what else do I want to have? Oh, I think she has a new book I want her to read. So I'll have her do her literature. And then we'll put typing and I'll put a question mark after typing. Um, to see if she has time. This may take. A lot of her time. Okay, so then on Wednesday, again, it'll be math, grammar. I do not write out specifically exactly the um, lesson they need to do. They just know that they do the next lesson, especially in math and grammar. I go through and circle things, and then she works for a set time limit. And Reading, they know, is 30 minutes. She'll do typing. Oh, we got to do Spanish. And she can't always get everything in every day. But she's doing art there. She'll do Spanish here. And I'm going to put logic if she has time. Put a question mark to extra. Spanish first, logic last. And then on Thursday, we'll flip those. The logic is a lot easier than the Spanish, though, so. As far as workload, it's a lower workload. Read, um, we'll just do logic and Spanish. Okay, so that fills her in for the week. Normally, we shouldn't have to necessarily do co-op on both these days, but since we're going to the zoo, that will affect her needing to do that. She may end up doing some on Saturday. She is a ninth grader, so workload is a little higher. Okay. And then J, our second J here, we have math, language, arts, piano, Bible memory, just like a sister. Um, let's see what else. Oh, Next to language art, I put a square that tells him that he's supposed to read for half an hour. He's going to be working on his poster. Oh, we better put co-op if he has any co-op to finish. He probably wants to study. They're going to do a big review game. And the other thing we will give him is coding. And I will put a question mark that if there's time. So if the question marks are, if you have time, co-op question mark, if you have it. If you have work to do, coding question mark. If you have time, 
if it gets to be 3 30 4 o'clock and you're not done with all this yet then let's skip that for the day um oh i did not put group time into our week so monday and wednesday and thursday we are aiming to do our group time um the oldest is not included in having to do the group time it's a thing we're starting back up that I did with our other kids. Some people do a morning basket. This is kind of our morning basket, but we do it at 11 o'clock because I found that my kids all start at different times in the day. I have some kids that clean up from breakfast, and by the time they're done cleaning up from breakfast, I can already have taught a kid, one of my younger kids. So we don't all start at the same time. So it's easier to do a group time or morning basket if we just do it at 11 o'clock. And I'll show you guys someday what we do with that. Okay, so again, math, language arts, piano, those are always our basics. We're working on our Bible memory. Um, let's see. And then, is there anything? We're going to do health. Oh, typing. I'm waiting on some health books. Okay. Co-op, cave poster, group time, math, language arts, start getting sloppy, piano, and we will do coding again. Mm, now I'll put typing in a question mark, especially for cleaning house. I doubt we're getting to that typing lesson. Okay. Next kid. Very similar, math, language arts, piano, okay. Oh, co-op if she has it. She does not have Bible memory. She will have some memory stuff soon, but not yet. Group time. And then she has a apologetics class that she is working on. So we'll have her work on that. And then here again, math. Language, arts, piano. A lot of this does become repetitive. I know there are some people who do like a dry erase sheet instead, and we've done that in the past. This works for me because I find that we have a lot of days, like we, a lot of weeks where our days are messed up. Um, like Friday, we're going to be gone all day. So do I? how do I want to push that around and change things. We also have a lot of stuff like, oh, we're doing art, so that's gonna take a long portion of our time, or we're gonna spend a morning working on a poster. Which these days we're just doing half an hour of the poster, but some days we might spend a whole morning working on a 4-H project, and so we're gonna get less done. So for me, I like the flexibility of writing it in each day, even though it definitely takes a little more time but it allows me to have a lot more flexibility. These days are all looking very similar, but they don't always. And here I'll assign logic and put a question mark. So again, if you get, oh, I forgot to give her handwriting. She needs to do handwriting. And we'll put a question mark next to her logic. So these are the things that if you run out of time, those should be the last ones you do. Okay, we are down here and we're going to do math, language arts, piano. I know she has some cooperating that I need to do with her. So then she also needs her group time and she needs handwriting. Okay, so here math. And she has a little box for math to practice her multiplication facts, language arts, handwriting, group, piano. And then we will add in, what other things does she do? I like to look at the list sometimes. Um, we will add in logic for her for that day. It'll be some logic puzzles that we do. Math language arts, handwriting, group time, and piano, and we will leave it there for that. And then one more, lost my pen. 
So this is the youngest and small attention span. So we do what we have to do, but it's never a ton. Thanks for joining us today. Please leave a comment if you have something else you'd like me to talk about or you have any questions, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos about what we do.